All right. Uh, welcome everybody to this edition of uh, the Reboot Fest. What is Reboot Fest? Reboot Fest is essentially an idea that was floated by my colleague Raghavendra Satish Perry, who unfortunately is not here. Uh, he's currently in Hyderabad um, uh, getting a dialysis done uh, under pandemic, uh, but we'll have that discussion for another time. Uh, the idea of Reboot Fest was to talk about the changes that are coming for the current times. Uh, some of these are not necessarily new ideas, like for example, remote work. We've had remote work before this pandemic struck us. Uh, remote work has become a necessity as a result of this pandemic. And of course, there will be questions about whether we continue this or not. Uh, there are ideas from the past uh, that are becoming important for the present. There are ideas from the present that will become important for the future. And so Reboot Fest is, an, is essentially a festival to look at some of these ideas. At the moment, Reboot Fest itself is an idea, so we'll see how it kind of goes. And moving beyond ideas, let's talk about uh, what we will be doing today. Uh, funnily enough, when I was uh, trying to conceptualize this event, uh, I realized that running an event is like running a PhD thesis every time. It's like writing your PhD thesis where you want to think about the focus, you want to think about what the audience will take away, what is it that the resource persons will take away. And so that's always a challenge, but it's also very exciting. And so therefore, what are we going to do in this event today? Uh, we have a very large agenda saying that is there a framework we can arrive regarding work from home and this is an ongoing conversation we don't expect to have all the answers today but what will be useful is to kind of understand how some organizations have done it and we also have a very interesting mix of attendees who probably have been remote workers themselves uh, who are organizations who are trying to hire for diversity who are trying to solve for these problems and we hope to bring them into this conversation and see what the expectations are both from an employer perspective as well as from a candidate perspective and what are the factors beyond employment which is societal that we have to consider and having said that it's a really large agenda but we promise we will finish within an hour so you can get back to your friday evening if a friday evening is different if under lockdown and what it was earlier so uh, with much uh, without much ado this is what we intend to do today uh, the format of this event is that there will be a bunch of questions that we will be asking Ashok, Shipra and Rahul, who we will introduce uh, in a short bit. There will be participants who will chip in to answer questions. We're also watching the questions that are coming on YouTube live. If you're watching us from YouTube live, uh, we will incorporate your questions from YouTube live also into the into the discussion. Some of uh, you as attendees, we will unmute you so that you can ask questions uh, in between. And uh, some of you, you may have to ask your questions in the Q&A tab or raise your hand so that we can unmute you. Uh, we have a few polls that we will also run during the event. So let's see how we can make it interactive uh, and, uh, and a fun one for the Friday evening. So with that, uh, what I'd like to do is to ask uh, each one of you to introduce yourself. Let's go in an alphabetical order. So Ashok, if you can introduce yourself uh, and your organization uh, a brief bit for about a minute or two and then we go with uh, Rahul and Shipra. Hi, uh, my name is Ashok Hariharan and I have a company called uh, Bugeri Consulting which operates in the legal tech space. So it's a very niche space dealing with uh, legislation and technology. And uh, my company has been operating on a work from home basis right from the beginning. Our clients are over, they are all overseas, they are all remote. Uh, all the people who work and worked for me, they have all been remote. I myself am remote. So that, is, uh, that has been my overall experience. So I, I also worked as a remote consultant. So it kind of made sense for me to keep everything remote. So that's that's where I'm coming from. Rahul? Hi, um, my name is Rahul Gonzalez. Uh, I run a uh, design firm called Obvious. Uh, we've been around for about eight years now. And uh, yeah, I, well, thank you for having us here for starters, Zainab, uh, Hasgeek, and the rest of uh, the attendees. Uh, we've been around for about eight years, like I said, and we started out pretty much at the same time that mobile started to be a thing in India and have moved from building out the first apps for companies like Flipkart, Mintra, Swiggy, Dunzo, and then have continued to be part of their growth stories and many other companies like theirs since then. And I um, essentially, uh, I, I'm one of the three founders. I uh, uh, take care of 
uh, setting organizational priorities and um, you know, I'm a combination of a CEO slash janitor. Uh, one of the things that I look at very closely is the hiring aspects. In a previous life, I looked at um, a lot of issues around accessibility in India, uh, specifically electronic accessibility. Uh, and while that doesn't have a direct correlation with today's panel, I think a lot of the principles that we dealt with and, and talked about at that point in time uh, have significant overlaps with the way that we look at hiring uh, at, at Obvious. Thanks, Rahul. Shipra? Hi, guys. I'm Shipra Pandit. I, I'm working with JustPay. It's a digital payment uh, solution platform. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm heading the HR department at JustPay. So let's say from the last five years, I'm working for JustPay and doing a lot of hiring and uh, different, working in different domains of human resources for them. And uh, diversity has been one of the part. Uh, I'm very excited to be here today and to talk about it. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Shipra. I would just take a minute to say that we have about uh, 10 attendees here on Zoom, some of who I know and some of whom we will include uh, and add you to kind of ask questions in between. So give us about 10 minutes to set this conversation rolling and uh, we will add you in. In the meantime, if you have questions, please put them on the Q&A tab. And those who are watching us from YouTube, please uh, put your questions in the chat link. We will pull your questions from there into this discussion. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start... Uh, uh, over here and uh, what we have here uh, to set the context once again that we have two uh, representations over here Ashok who has run a remote company and Rahul and Shipra who don't necessarily have a remote company but they have tried to solve for diversity we will see how we can get both these conversations going into each other and also meet participant expectations here uh, Ashok uh, maybe we'll start with you first uh, where there are a few specific questions uh, that I had uh, the first one being is that uh, when you were hiring for Bunjani, and you might want to just uh, reset the context for Bunjani, uh, what was your messaging and you know, what was it about remote work that you found that was appealing to candidates when you uh, went about hiring? And how did you find that pool of people uh, in terms of who were interested in remote work and what were their concerns? Well, uh, you know, I started in the normal way, you know, like, uh, you know, you have these sites like, you, you know, you yourself, your organization has a site, has job and uh, angel list and, you know, these job portals. So I essentially advertised on these portals and uh, I had a broad, uh, I had a broad sweep of people applying there. So the, the formula is, I didn't know a formula because it was something new for me to start with. So initially, I was looking at the credentials and I was hiring on the basis of credentials. So just to be honest, I never did this with any idea of diversity or anything in mind, you know. So I was just looking at getting things done, finding the right people for that, you know, at the most economical cost. And uh, that, that is what motivated me. But I ended up uh, on the other side because I ended up hiring uh, you know, the classical formula, you know, you get a guy from IIT, you hire him, you get two people from IIT, you hire him, but it didn't really work for me because uh, working from home uh, was not compatible with some of these people. They had different expectations. They had uh, been in large organizations, they had been to uh, offices, so they had very different expectations, you know, so they were, they were new to it and... Uh, it didn't work out initially, you know. I, I hired people from these organizations and, uh, you know, I had to fire them or they quit after two months because they could not understand what it means to work from home. And they were not, you know, some people were not honest to start with. Then by accident, I realized that uh, uh, there were quite a few women applying and uh, there was, uh, there were at least, you know, there were, uh, there were people with other constraints, like, you know, some kind of disability, uh, you know, who were applying. And I had actually rejected somebody in an interview uh, because uh, they had a speech disability. So, you know, then it struck me that, you know, maybe there was, because uh, that person actually wrote back to me saying, you know, maybe I didn't do well in the interview because I spoke uh, badly, but I have a speech problem, so what do I do? You know? 
So then I got in touch with uh, that guy's referees and they all told me, hey, you know, he's fine. You know, he just has a bit of a speech impediment, but he's fine. So I ended up hiring this guy. I hired another lady who told me she can't do full time, but she's willing to do a few hours a day because she's trying to learn the violin at home. So she wouldn't tell me the reason in the beginning. Then finally she told me, you know, I'm trying to learn the violin and the teacher comes home. So that is the only way, uh, you know, I, and she was in Mumbai. She was in Mumbai and she could not commute. So I said, fine, you know, I'll take you on board. And so similarly, you know, I had other cases of, uh, like, you know, ladies who were stuck at home because they had kids and the husband was working late hours and, you know, they did not have the flexibility of commuting and uh, coming back home and cooking. I don't know all the typical things that, uh, you know, uh, housewives do. So I ended up hiring, uh, you know, a diverse set of people like that. So it was purely by accident, you know, and uh, honestly, it worked out because I found that all these people who had all these uh, constraints of their own, they were more diligent, you know, they paid a lot more attention to their time when they worked from home. So, you know, for example, uh, you know, the lady who was doing part-time, four hours, she was able to do what the other people were able to do in eight hours, you know, the, the I call normal people, young people, you know, who would love to work in some startup company or somewhere. She was doing more work in four hours than what those people were doing. So, you know, just to give you an example, and it was not the only case, you know, even the other cases, there were people who were more communicative and because they were in those circumstances and they had no other choice. So they kind of forced themselves to adapt to the circumstances. They had adapted a room in their house just to be able to work from home. Uh, things like that, you know, so they had the facilities and they had thought of it. So it was not just, you know, let me just try this out. They had actually thought about it and uh, they had set up their lives uh, to be able to do this efficiently. So that that was basically my experience. Thanks, Ashok. And I think you did make a point which you might want to push, uh, which is regarding your own perspective on work from home. So if you can push that point and then we will move to uh, Shipra and Rahul. Okay, so you mean in terms of... Uh context and how work from home enables you to uh, create your own context and okay work. so you know i have a broader perspective on this some people think i'm crazy when i say it uh, but uh, i think you know if you look at humanity itself this whole going to the office and uh, doing things together and you know it's all a new concept you know it's only a hundred years old since 1906 or whatever taylorism you know it all came out of there Humans are not designed to work like machines, like cogs in a machine. So my belief is that, you know, right now with the internet and a lot of the work that is non-industrial, like the way, you know, like the work that the tech space is doing, it is very well adapted to people, uh, you know, doing things from home, you know, in their own social context. So, you know, I find it very strange when I see companies saying, uh, you come to office, let's build an office community, you know, you make friends. They, they have to say that because people spend 12 hours at the office, you know, they do two hours of commutes, they are spending 10 hours there, so it's nonsense. My community is my neighbor. So I know people who go to office, spend 12 hours a day, they don't even know their neighbors. So well, what is the point of work like that? So with work from home, you don't need that office community. You know, my, the first feedback I get from HR people and people in the office is, oh my God, I miss the office. Uh, I miss the camaraderie at the office. And say, why do you need that? If you're working from, from home, you got your people around you. You have time to make uh, friends around you. You don't even have to live in the city. You, you don't have to live in Bangalore. You know, you can live anywhere you want in your own friendly, green social context. Uh, as long as you got a good internet, which is there in most places, very many places in India, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't see what the problem is. It didn't need a pandemic for us to think about this. Okay, thanks, Ashok. We'll come back to this point. Um, I'm going to move to Shipra uh, and then Rahul. Uh, I think both Shipra and Rahul, uh, since we are moving to the diversity context, uh, what I'd like to understand from both of you is uh, tell us a little bit about your business. And I know Rahul's already done that. 
and uh, tell us why did you decide to kind of uh, hire more women uh, for your work what has been your approach uh, and your messaging when you reach out to candidates asking them to join you specifically with respect to women and do you have a sense of the expectations that women have uh, from workplaces from employers in terms of the messaging as well as when you actually had candidates join you uh, so shipra if you can go first surely so um i wanted to start from the very beginning uh, uh, let's say in earlier times the hiring uh, were related to mostly the compliance related goals however the latest trend of inclusive hiring is related to be more collaborative and team based structure so the collaboration doesn't need you to be you know sitting in person and talking about it uh so i just be we, we we offered a very flexible uh, flexibility as the workplace perk and we we brought this win win strategy by being sensitive to the uh, needs of the people and then providing them options to accommodate uh, um you know the varied set of work now i believe the organizations that wake up to this uh, um uh, they establish a very common vision and they achieve high goals by both supporting and capitalizing uh, a diverse workforce and they succeed right so just pay uh, just pay is working on a very niche programming language we are working on functional programming we are working on haskell and pure script and uh, it's it's been known uh, to very less number of people it's there are very scarce resources in all over the world to this technology so we don't build, we don't look for people with skill knowledge we don't look uh, for people with uh, uh, the domain understanding we look for people who has the ability to learn and code and also have the curiosity to dig dig deep so that's how we are engaging pe more people remotely and here we have brought in lot of women uh, we have we have uh, you know brought in the ability to solve the problems and we have seen that women are more disciplined <laughs> when it comes to work when when it comes to uh, getting the work done they are more into it so maybe the innovation uh, or or the creativity uh, might be bit on the other side of the areas like design and and uh, uh, more creative ideas towards uh, uh, building into some processes and all but the discipline part is the only thing where i feel that women has done their part uh, really well and they have excelled and achieved the goals of the organization and therefore we are focusing more on uh, different set of people and uh, uh, the gender itself okay uh, rahul uh, if uh, you can and also if you can specifically and concretely point to us how do you message when you specifically reach out to women candidates what have you learned in terms of their expectations in terms of what they expect of the workplace and of the employer uh, when you have put out your hiring messages sure um so i'll i'll uh, you know uh, in the same way that uh, shipra did I'll, i'll step back for a second uh, and talk to you a little bit about our motivations for uh, building a more representative workplace right uh, i think that one of our Uh, main reasons for doing so was that um, we're in the business of building products for other people, and we believe that a product which has been built by a homogenous set of people is unlikely to take into account the opportunities or challenges that a diverse world faces. So we didn't set out to say, "Hey, we want to hire more women," right? I, I think that's that's very uh, key to uh, sort of understand. we said how do we build a workplace that is better representative of the world in which we exist right so that's that's the broad uh, idea that we had and of course gender is the possibly the first um, and and you know perhaps uh, uh, you know on on the scale of of different axes of diversity perhaps the easiest to tackle in the beginning right or, or perhaps that's me speaking from uh, you know having um, uh gone through that process for about 3 years now right i think when you start interrogating different kinds of axes when you go into uh you know like we were talking about earlier when we go into axes around um, sexuality around disability around caste around class etc 
uh, it becomes far more complex to figure out exactly how to calibrate one's hiring, um, uh, you know, sort of pipeline processes. Um, I think the uh, other thing that you talked about, right, how do we actually reach out? Uh, it actually starts far before that, right? So we set out three years ago to say, hey, we're not, um, at, at that point in time, we were a very, you know, and I think that we're, uh, you know, uh, baby steps uh, along that particular journey, but we were far less representative organization than we are today. Right? So we set out to say, okay, how do we actually look at our overall organization's growth going forward? And um, I think a key part of that was to look at every part of our workplace, right? So there's one part of it is, of course, uh, when you actively reach out to people. But even before that, uh, how do you build, uh, you know, I, th I think today it's called an employee brand, right? How do you build an idea around, uh, you know, an, uh, an idea with people who may not actively be looking to join your workplace? You may not actively be hiring at this point in time, but how do you build a sense of who you are before people come in to start with, right? So that's one part. Then of course, there's within the hiring uh, sort of cycle, there's, you know, different parts of that. So we looked at that as well as a sort of a system. Uh, the third part is what is daily life like? And, um, you know, that that is of course the, when, when somebody's in the organization, that's the majority of the way in which they experience the organization. So we looked at multiple touch points within that, right? Uh, so, you know, from the more um, uh, starting at the beginning, uh, some of these 30 day, first 30 days, some of these first 60 days, 90 days, right? Then what happens when somebody has been there for a year? What happens when somebody has been there for two years, right? And there are typical inflection points that everyone goes through. Um, you know, if you're, if you're um, in the tech space today in India, uh, if you're a funded company, then at three or four years, then there's, you know, typically an itch when people stock options, vest, etc. cetera. Um, in, you know, maybe, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know what the average lifespan of an employee is today. I suspect that it's, you know, somewhere between maybe, I don't know, 18 to 24 months. I think Shipra is probably a better place to answer that. Uh, but we said, okay, uh, how do we actually build for, um, uh, you know, one of our one of our primary goals as an organization is to say, how can we build an organization where somebody would want to stay for 10 years? Right? How do we make sure that we look at uh, building an ambitious goal, right? Where uh, there's no downside to remaining at obvious for 10 years, either in terms of your own personal growth, your career growth, the opportunities that you unlock as part of that, or the financial compensation that that uh, you know we we can create for you. So that's how we sort of oriented ourselves along this particular thing. And of course, we're nowhere close to that, right? I cannot today in good faith say, hey, if you stay at Obvious for 10 years, you will not have any opportunity costs relative to the larger market, right? But I think that that's the sort of North Star that uh, we're looking at all our recruitment processes, uh, all our, uh, I, I don't know what it's called, um, I, I read uh, employee life cycle, is, is that right? So, you know, the, the entire time when somebody uh, is, is with you. Right? And I think then the last bit is we also very actively sort of look at how do our, uh, you know, when somebody leaves, obvious, and, you know, in many cases, um, uh, for the most part, right, it's been extremely amicable. We've in actually encouraged people uh, to move out because, you know, I think that um, uh, in many cases, though we saw that, you know, to meet their own uh, personal objectives, they would need a different space. They would need different opportunities. They would need different geographies, right? But we said that how does how do we maintain a great alumni network, right? Uh, because we don't see that this is sort of a one-way relationship. Right? If you look at, for instance, um, you know other consulting companies uh, like a McKinsey, for instance, right? Uh, their alumni are their biggest clients, right? Out of the, I, I don't know what the numbers are, but if you look at the Fortune 500, I, I would anticipate, you know, estimate that a good 50 to 60 percent of, you know, sort of C level is seeded with uh, by McKinsey, and that becomes a regular stream of business for them. So it creates a sort of a, a very, um, uh, you know, a virtuous cycle in some sense. Right. So we looked at all of these different bits, and we said, okay, to start with, let's be very clear even before somebody joins us, because at this point in time, or you know, when I'm, I'm talking about th uh, three years ago, there's no good reason for somebody to, uh, there's no good way for people to find out 
what obvious is about. So what we did is we uh, started from this value of being public by default with all the things that we do. Right? And we assembled what we today call our playbook, which is at this point in time, more than 50,000 words, which is publicly accessible. But everything right from the mundane to the sublime is how I term it. Right? So everything from these are the days that uh, you know, we have holidays. Uh, this is what you can expect on your first day to, you know, we give away all our secret sauce in terms of this is exactly how we do, you know, our design, this is how we do our engineering. Uh, you know, we tell people like, you know, our entire hiring exam is available online. So all the questions that we would ask you uh, as part of a, uh, you know, I, I think there's sort of in the engineering hiring, there's a take home exercise, uh, etc. All the way, all the questions are available. And the way in which we would evaluate your submission is also publicly available. Right? So you don't have to go through our hiring pipeline to get a sense of what it would be like. You don't have to go, you don't have to be part of obvious to at least get a sense of what it's like internally as well. Right? So I think that was, we sort of looked at these as systems and not as, um, hey, you know, we need to go hire 10 women. And so what, how can we short circuit that? I can go into more detail perhaps, uh, but I don't want to take up so much airtime. Right. So I think I just have one last question for both uh, Shipra and Rahul before uh, we run a poll and open it up to the attendees uh, over here, which is that uh, this is again going back to this question uh, and maybe you have addressed it, but if you could summarize one or two uh, expectations that you have found that you know women candidates have had, uh, which may have not been part of your messaging, or uh, you know what you've learned in the process of hiring, like what are your hiring funnels, uh, and uh, uh, you know where is where is what is the expectation of a candidate from the employer from the workplace, and which you think other organizations should also incorporate when they're reaching out. Uh, Shipra and then Rahul. Uh, Shipra, you're like to unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. So. If I look at the example of how I am staying at JustPay and what is really motivating me to stay at JustPay, uh, I just wanted to uh, put across that JustPay is a place where you are not involved in one particular area. So for example, uh, let me just take that recent example and we were doing this closure meetup, right? Uh, and, and you were helping us in, uh, you know, bringing in the community and talking about uh, what we are doing and suddenly we came up about this logo mug logo and we wanted to get the mug logo to you and it, it was so urgent and we were so working out onto that but my team was not wasn't there they they were they were out somewhere and and they were not available to me my design was like okay what i have to do now so i created the design i went into it I created five, six designs. I really draw that design onto the mug. And I, I went to Vimal, the founder of the company, and I say, Vimal, can, can we just do this? And he sat with us for, for around three to four hours and we, we just did a lot of improvement into it. And we, we came up with the design and we all loved it. So that's how we are bringing uh, the responsibility and the ownership to everyone. It's not even women, but to everyone. And women's are very much interested in all these areas where, where they can, you know, outperform the, the real responsibilities uh, of theirs. And then they bring more creativity and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the innovation to different areas. Not only this, I, I wanted to add very recently, we have started learning R. So I'm also learning R, the HR, the whole team is learning R. We, why we are learning R? and what exactly it will help us out in, in the future. So we, we are learning how to just bring the deep analysis and automation in the human resource team. We wanted to do the funnel analysis, not on uh, Excel. We wanted to bring the automated automation towards it. And that's how we, we believe that people are learning and bringing uh, their strength to the organization. And that's how we are engaging more and more and motivating people to join us. Right. Uh, yeah, Rahul, thanks for sharing the link to the playbook. I was just going to suggest that uh, we should also tweet about it. Uh, 
but uh, Siddhant, we've noted your question. We will be talking about the disability sector in a bit. Uh, Zainab, I just wanted to add to your question. You know, you no. asked, uh, like, you know, what, you know, what did the women working for you expect? Uh, so, in at least in our case, uh, from so we, I had like four women out of our team. You know, at different points, uh, I had four women working, uh, you know, for our team, and uh, most of the time they all wanted flexibility because they were working from home. They wanted flexibility in timing, uh, which was one problem they had with many companies where they worked. Because I asked them, you know, uh, so they said, you know, we, I, I, I can do two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon uh, because I have life in the middle, you know. I have to, my son is coming back from school. I have to make lunch for him. And that was very difficult for many companies to accommodate because they have meetings on, at scheduled times and you know it's always a problem for many organizations to to deal with this kind of flexibility so because they have uh, this concept of having the fixed website, .com 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 they say sorry. different types of flexibility sorry no what problem. something happened yeah no problem ashok uh, we are all used to this new way of life <laughs> <laughs> There you can hear my daughter also talking about tamarind. Okay. Sorry, that was my talking clock. For some reason, it uh, showed up at that point. <laughs> it was not my son. It was the talking clock. I just realized. Yeah. So sorry for that. So uh, you know that is uh, something that I heard across the board. You know this uh, wanting flexible timing, and uh, because companies have fixed meetings every day, you know uh, that that fixed schedule does not work for many people. Uh, so that is uh, one big thing that I, at least that's what I heard. And then the second thing is probably training, some kind of uh, online courses, uh, because somebody sitting in Baroda for them to go to a conference and attend something was a problem. So, uh, you know, giving them access to online, uh, online training or online courses, there's so many of them around, you know, so that, that was big for many people. That was, uh, you know, they, they really appreciated very small things like that. I mean, it, it doesn't cost much to do those things. Uh, so that was appreciated. Yeah. Thanks, Ashok. I think this is quite concrete. Rahul, anything to add on, like, you know, exactly these concrete uh, uh, points that Ashok has raised in terms of obvious his experience uh, or anything that you think are other motivating factors uh, beyond these immediate tangible needs of flexibility and, uh, and education and training? Sure. So I, I think that's that's a good start. That's a uh, you know definite um, a huge plus, right? Uh, in terms of having flexible times, etc. I think that um, one. I mean, you know, there's some things that we've done, uh, and I think these are things that are um, a sort of a, a, a result of some of our learnings over the last few years. Uh, so. I've also included this link later in the chat. Maybe you can share it with the other participants if you think it's applicable. Uh, so for instance, you know, uh, we've learned a lot from, uh, you know, um, our, our friends at Nilenso. Uh, so they introduced a paid menstrual leave policy, right? So uh, we have, we've adopted that uh, completely for, for ourselves. And so we have a menstrual leave policy, which is separate from you know, a, reg a regular holiday allowance uh, or, or sick leave, et cetera. Uh, we also have very comprehensive family insurance, which covers not just your spouse and, and uh, but also children, right? Um, the other thing that I think that uh, Ashok touched on is also being very uh, sort of aware of what working hours are like, right? Uh, so we have very uh, sort of um, actively look at ensuring that working hours don't exceed, uh, you know, a 40 hour work week. Uh, in addition to that, whenever we hold events, right, uh, we make sure that we don't do late evenings. Uh, you often have team dinners and outings, which are at times which are very difficult. And, and you know, these are important, um, uh, you know, places where people make connections. Uh, often there's, um, uh, you know, sort of post work connects across teams that happens at these places. And I think they're highly tied to also progress within the organization at certain scales. So we made sure that we looked at, okay, can we not have them later in the evening? Can we have them, can we do a breakfast meetup instead, right? Is, is that a more, 
is that easier for different people? Um, again, parental leave. Uh, India has a really progressive maternity leave policy, I think, uh, especially compared to lots of other global, uh, other countries in the world. But uh, there's a clear yeah. expectation in some sense in the law uh, that uh, the women stay at home and, and, you know, take care of children. So we said that, okay, can we at least do, I, I think that we offer at this point 12 weeks of paternity leave, of paid paternity leave with an option to extend beyond that at a you know, slightly reduced salary. Uh, beyond that, I think it's really important to have, you know, and I think this is like, for me, this is like the baseline. Do you have clear policies on discrimination, sexual harassment? Are these sensitized at regular intervals across the company? In some sense, you know, it's, it's not that hard to be, um, to be inclusive in India because, you know, the bar is so low that, you know, you keep, if you're a company, you would keep hitting your ankles against it, right? So, <laughs> In that sense, uh, you know, in terms of a takeaway, I, I think there's just very small actionable things that you can do. Uh, beyond that, I think, you know, looking at, okay, can you do community, can you sponsor communities which may be outside or, or you know, uh, which are adjacent to the things that you're doing? Uh, so I think that, um, you know, we've worked with you before on this. Uh, we work with other groups. There's this one called Pi Ladies. Uh, we also actively mentor people without you know an expectation that they become part of our organization right uh, again i think that you know i saw something about uh, physical infrastructure as well and i think that these are really important things so um, you know continuing from that point about menstrual leave uh, we the core thought was how do you destigmatize menstruation right and so something as simple as making sure that all bathrooms have access to menstrual supplies which are regularly refreshed right uh, is is just and you know you just put a little sign there saying you know free for all kind of thing. Um, how do you make sure that your office uh, uh, you know furniture is is uh, suitable for everybody, right? Regardless of uh, you know your shape and size, uh, can you have a equipment that adjusts to you rather than you needing to adjust to the equipment? So you know, can your desk be lower if you want that? You know, why does it all have to be at uh, you know, 30 inches is its standard. Why can't it be at 26 inches or 48, right? Depending on what you want. Again, uh, you know, something as simple, and, and this is something that um, so many people have called out, that uh, centralized air conditioning is very rarely uh, comfortable for everybody. And, you know, I did a little bit of digging into this, and it's really funny. Uh, it was sort of standardized based on the study which was done in the 60s. Uh, based on the temperature of a white man who's wearing a suit, right? So that's why you'll find that a lot of offices will have the air conditioning down at 22 or something. And, you know, this is just such a simple visual test that you can do. You know, you walk into any organization, you know, like a medium-sized company, right? 250-odd company. And just look at who's wearing a jacket or a sweater and who isn't. And, you know, there's just, there's so much truth in that simple visual test. Uh, so yeah, these are just just some very basic things that you can look at at uh, in terms of uh, changing things around. Thanks, uh, Rahul uh, Ashok. Thanks for this impetus. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, Amok. Can we run the first poll? We want to find out from the 12 attendees on Zoom uh, how many of you are remote workers. So if you could please respond to this one. Okay, uh, I'm going to bring in a few participants over here uh, to uh, to respond to some of the points that uh, three of you have made. Uh, let me bring in uh, Nadika, who's my colleague also here. Uh, Deepti, I'm going to promote you also to a panelist uh, so that you can uh, unmute yourself. Uh, and uh, we also have Sri Rahari Sriraman, uh, who is uh, driving the efforts at Nirenso in terms of diversity. Uh, I will point out to you exactly what you need to do, uh, but I also wanted to mention that we have Siddhant and uh, Satish here who represent uh, uh, accessibility and disability. Uh, I'm sorry if I've used the wrong terms, but I think they may also have a bunch of questions, both from the point of view of inclusion and from the point of remote work. So we will bring you in as well. But I think uh, in terms of uh, the expectations from Nalika, Deepti, and Srihari, uh, if you all can uh, go one by one in that order, is if you can feedback uh, you know, the points that uh, Rahul and Chipra uh, made with respect to 
what would be your expectations as uh, candidates uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know the kind of organizations they're running in terms of uh, the messaging that they put out and what is your expectation as a candidate from the workplace from the employer etc uh, both from the point of view of remote work as well as from the point of view of inclusion uh, sorry for the long long winded question but i think you can take it up from there so if we can have nadika then deepthi and shri hari okay so uh i think very interesting questions and interesting um uh, you know things have come up um so just to give a sort of a background i've been working um on and off outside of an office setup for i think well on 10 years now right um i usually i occasionally go into an office and then and then i decide that it's too much for me and then i come out and i start doing stuff on my own or i work uh, with a few people that i like and sort of do things like that um i think one of the biggest uh, uh uh my learnings i've worked in advertising i've worked in journalism tv production uh web and tech media and things like that right uh, one of the biggest things that i see is that offices sort of um uh, companies and organizations and office that physical space of an office sort of restricts um restricts you to conform to certain kinds of expressions on yourself right and uh, and uh, it also affects you because some of us have complex lives and some of us have complex identities and things like that so an office uh, space the physical space i'm not talking about an organization but i'm talking of a physical space sort of restricts uh, how and um, what you do with yourself um and i think uh, that's something that i would expect from an organization to address to me if i am as a candidate i'm, I'm coming to you how do you address this question of um so there are things like dress code it may not work for everybody some of us don't like dress codes some of us uh, you know um we may have other uh, reasons for letting our hair grow out or whatever things like that i'm just saying this are this this may sound like trivial things to uh, to a to a to a person from a from a hijab perspective but for a person who may not be from your mainstream or who don't want to fit into a mainstream these are things that matter a lot more right or uh, things like for instance uh, ashok was talking about i i may have to work uh, i may be able to work only two uh, for two hours in the morning and then go and cook and you know clean the house and handle things and maybe i have to go to a bank for instance uh, you know to open up to open an account or to pay off a check or something like that and if i'm sitting in an office from 9 to 6 then i'm you know i'm pretty much gone, uh, uh, um, left uh, um, hanging with other things that i uh, i may have to do so these are things that i would uh, you know things that are uh, matter to me as a candidate cool uh yeah uh thanks nadika uh, shipra rahul ashok would uh, can we collect a question from deepthi or would you like to respond to this uh i would like to uh, put forward that uh, see companies uh, whenever they uh, bring in certain kind of infrastructure they always uh, bring that infrastructure after understanding the comfortability and uh, of the people so for example when we brought into uh, uh, we 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 recently moved last year we moved to a different and a new building altogether but while we were uh, looking at the infrastructure part of it uh most of the core team members were uh, playing a really uh, they, they were playing a really good part in uh, you know uh, portraying what could be the best comfortable zone and what all things we can bring into make it more uh, easy way of working right uh, so so we we brought the colors we we brought a very uh, neutral color to the uh, walls of the organization we brought certain um areas where we can uh, put across the way where where people go and just have some rest uh, the sofas the chairs the t- uh, tvs everything was planned so we we brought in lot of core team members to help us to address uh, the comfortability of the organization and later we brought in uh, the way how we are right now in 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 infrastructure today i would say um i think i i would also like to uh, say how we have uh, pianos on each floor of our office uh, we have musical instrument uh, 
people are very much into the music into classical music into different kind of music and and they go around and then they play we have a library uh, on each floor not only that we we have a uh, <laughs> terrace garden where where sometimes people go and sit and they just talk they just talk about things what are happening in their life what what exactly they wanted to innovate and all all that stuff so we have indoor games we we plan indoor games there are different things at just be so uh, i think we have brought all of it by just uh, understanding the need and uh, to make it as a second home for people okay uh, ashok uh, rahul do you have any I, I i i have a comment on that you know yeah, so yeah. I have an extreme view and I have a moderate view. So let me start with the moderate view. You know, so what what uh, you know what uh, what Nadika asked has not really been answered there. You know, so I I don't see an answer. I'm hearing pianos put in the office space. I'm hearing other stuff. I, I, most people don't want the piano. You know, do you do I want to go to office and play the piano? No, I prefer to do few hours in the office and sit at home and do my work. get my bank stuff sorted out get my get my food cooked nicely by myself you know I have the time to do that rather than ordering some stale food from some startup you know i might even catch a pandemic doing that so uh, you know i i think those pianos and those gizmos they don't really address they are just there to decorate the office and create like an environment that hey hey it's fine if you all come to work and spend 12 hours a day here so we got to build a community so it's ignoring reality so now you know this pandemic has turned up and it's uh, brought reality home so i'm sorry but i don't agree with that view so i i think my more moderate view is that so my extreme view is there should be laws which force companies in certain sectors to have a certain percentage of jobs completely uh, you know remote there should be laws for that that is my extreme view because unless there are laws companies will never do it you had uh, you know kids working in carpet factories uh, which was fine you know until there were laws banning that otherwise you know why would something like that happen until the 80s and 90s you know that is how i think of these things so that's my extreme view so uh, on the moderate side i think organizations should be flexible uh, you know uh, if uh, somebody is different they may not be they may not feel comfortable you know let's face it organizations are male centric everything is male centric talking about netflix and uh, i don't know all the conversation is around this uh, you know kind of artificiality you know netflix what tv show did you see what did you do it's not about life so what nadika asked was uh, you know how do i feel comfortable you know with who i am and you know come to the office and i don't feel uh, i'm in a different place nadika is probably most comfortable at home let's face it you know uh, 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 you know narika feels comfortable working from home so i don't see that being addressed you know so that, that is just uh, what i noticed you know sorry sure. so i, I um, yeah. yeah rahul uh, i think before you can sorry uh, shipra rahul uh, before you can respond to uh, this uh, you know point that narika made and i know that shrihari is also here we actually have a set of uh, very interesting questions from youtube which i wanted to bring in over here and i would also like to put this question to narika and to nikhil uh, uh, as well and to shrihari which is that uh, there are questions about saying that how do you assess uh, self discipline and ownership and uh, you know relatedly we have uh, raga malika and rashmi asking saying that you know uh, how do you track the presence of employees in the work that they are doing when a large number of people in the organization are working from home so this question of trust and you know how do you do self assessment and discipline uh, i think it will be nice if uh, you know ashok you could go first maybe then nadika and shrihari and then we could take the rest of uh, the people uh, from both an employer and a candidate perspective ashok so uh, uh, so the first thing is you know there's an element of trust thing so you when you interview the candidate uh, you can kind of judge that sometimes by asking them uh, you know uh, about past work that they have done and checking up with their references you know how did this person work in a in a remote situation how did they work so that's one so two e- even in terms of tracking you know it doesn't even have to be something very intrusive 
you just need to have a daily update. So it's a fact that people, you can trust people, but sometimes uh, people also slip. So it's good to be able to keep track of that. So, you know, uh, like uh, what I would, what I used to do was have a travel page uh, where people uh, assign tasks on a weekly basis. They had, uh, you know, they, uh, they basically broadly knew what they were doing, uh, what they were going to do. And uh, they would just put an update at the end of the day. And since, uh, you know, the work was primarily programming, you could see the output which was being put on Git or whatever, you know, things were being tested. So it's not very hard to do that. So, and most of the time I found if you hire correctly, if you hire the right people, you know, trust is there. You know, if they are late, they will tell you in advance, not at the last minute, but two days uh, before. So there's a strong element of trust there. You know, that, that is certainly there. Thanks, Ashok. Nadika, uh, if you can also take that question and then Srihari. Okay. Uh, yeah, like Ashok says, uh, the question of trust is important. Um, who and how? So, um, frankly, I think we are we are beyond. I, I think this is something that I think a lot of companies are now figuring it out. Is that uh, letting the uh, letting people set their own deadlines on work and then just sort of nudging them along because I think the older technique of okay uh, the you know the boss is telling you okay this is this this is do it and you know do it and get it done and then we'll go to the next task sequential. Uh, you know, sort of sequential working is sort of giving way to taking up a couple of things that, uh, like a basket of related work and just sort of moving along uh, with it and setting very loose deadlines around it. Uh, I think that's sort of working. And I say this because, I, uh, you know, from an advertising uh, background to come to a, a sort of a general purpose, I don't know what I do exactly, but, you know, um, I see that I I work better if I ha if I know what, uh, if I know that I like these, sort of I set myself these goals, right? And then I know uh, I, I can do this and then I set my own deadline around it and then I just finish it. Uh, I, it doesn't help when somebody's breathing down my back, uh, my neck and telling me, okay, have you done this? Have you done that? Because, uh, and this is coming back to the earlier point of, there are things that we do outside of work also. And if you're sitting in an office and doing these t t t 10 things sequentially every day and then our head, you're, your mind space is going towards, oh, I have to do that at home. I have to carry over, you know, I have to um, so, sort of solve these other things and all that. So you, your mind space is going and so your productivity sort of dips there. So I think giving that trust to your employees uh, uh, that, okay, these are the tasks that we need to finish within a certain number, uh, in a certain amount of time. Can we just go ahead and do it and then we'll catch up and then have a review or whatever. I think that works. Um, there was a question about... Um, uh, in fact, there was a, a long time ago, there was this concept of presenteeism. I don't know if the people still, uh, uh, you know, um, talk about that because in a, in a setup, in a sort of rigid setup, we're forced to be present at work, even though we may not want to be present at work. Um, when you're not well, for instance, maybe let's say you're coming down with a small uh, cold or a flu, right? Uh, and you need to turn to work because there's a presentation or there's a meeting or there's something and then your contribution to that meeting is maybe like a 10% of what is going to happen there, but you were forced to stay there for the rest of the whole thing. And so that's going to dip uh, uh, very badly in terms of what you, what you do in terms of work and things like that. So I think those are things that um, uh, sort of helps with uh, uh, allowing this kind of freedom to choose timings and choose work uh, pressures and things like that. Um, there was a question about values and how do you... Um, ensure that other people have the same values. I think, I think it comes back to that idea of trust and, you know, I think it's this idea of what a company wants to be is, is translated by who is approaching uh, candidates. For instance, in Ashok or Shipra or Rahul, go out and meet people, right? It's sort of, I think there are many ways that it translates and then you know the sincerity of the people and then, and people sort of build build into it, they buy into this philosophy themselves, I think, and you can't force a certain philosophy on people who don't want it, uh, right? Um, and so I think in, in a certain way, you sort of hire the kind of people who you think will work to you, work for, work for this kind of, uh, to use a slightly abused word in a, a vision, right? And so you sort of build into that thing and it sort of comes to it. And I think just a question of just then trusting that people and giving them that 
space to build building to it and buy into it and then move on from there uh thanks nadika i think uh, shri hari and uh, rahul and maybe nikhil if you could also take this question of like uh, uh, you know self discipline self assessment especially because i think in many of your contexts also linked to uh, to being able to uh, you know deliver to a certain client uh, in your case you have to deliver on time and so therefore like uh, you know what happens in that case uh, shri hari uh, are you able to speak sure yeah uh, am i audible yes yes pretty much yeah okay Cool. Uh, I missed a good you chunk of. Uh, yeah. You can also turn on your video if you like. Uh, otherwise, we. No, are I'm in a dimly lit space. Okay. Sorry. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Should have would have been able to do that about an hour ago. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I may have missed some of the context early on. I wasn't able to join this um, in the initial part. Um, and I also want to call out that uh, at Nilenso, I'm probably not the best person to talk about this because. since well I'm, i'm i'm male and i think uh, it's very it's a lot more valuable to have a perspective of uh, a woman and i think uh, for example deepa or ned who are in leadership positions would be you know much better a place to talk about this uh, however in terms of uh, trust and self assessment and what not i think um, one thing that comes uh, somewhat by nature to us is uh, transparency uh we are structured as a cooperative and we have a sense of equal ownership at the lenso so this means that irrespective of your of your gender irrespective of your seniority you are going to have uh an uh, an equal sense in ownership in 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 terms of uh having an equal say and um structurally that provides transparency transparency in finances transparency in communication right so um over time over years what this has resulted in is a uh, a a trust in that if you're going to have a conversation with somebody you're likely going to have that conversation uh, with other people as well and there is no difference in you having that conversation one on one and having that conversation in a group all reviews everything happen uh, publicly i think uh, that's something that we've uh, grown with and i think that kind of helps um not reporting to someone also helps so we don't really have uh, someone to like okay this person is your boss you need to report to this person we just uh, expect people to give a daily updates on slack uh, whoever they are and they have a slack channel and and what not and uh, it's not really different whether you're male or uh, a female at least in that respect um uh, like rahul mentioned earlier uh, you know in terms of uh, menstruation and the baggage that comes with her or whatever right like it's it's completely okay for someone to say i have cramps and then take uh, the day off it's not a sick leave and people understand uh, what's going on there and and so it's also okay to talk about it completely at at all times um yeah so so structurally i think that's kind of the space we are in and i i'm i'm, I'm guessing it helps but i haven't really received an outsider's view on this Uh, an example of something that we hadn't thought about a lot for example is when uh, one of uh, the people that we work with uh, um refused to work in the same room as us because it was a room and it could it has walls and the door could be closed right and we didn't recognize this until it was said we live uh, we we uh, do our work from uh, a house essentially right uh, and not a large building with with the glass walls all around and there is a lack of physical transparency and um this is something we had it even considered until this person actually told us and since then like you know we've made a little bit of an effort in like always keeping doors open even if you're in meetings things like that uh and i'm sure we have a lot to do on that front as well we have a lot to improve on um and like touching back a little bit on um the remote aspect of things uh, i'd say like at least uh, at nilenso and being consulting firm and what not work from home hasn't changed a whole lot um, although i think working from home has helped uh, make some of the things that are generally more prominent with women as in like, you know taking time some time off to cook or or go to your vessels or whatever apparent in everyone's lives right so it shows up in everyone's Okay, I'm doing this right now. Sorry, I'm not in front of your screen. 
uh, front of the screen, I can't respond <clears throat> to this right now. That sort of thing uh, becomes a little more apparent, and I think maybe we can use that as an input to ensure that you know we're always being a bit sensitive. Okay. Uh, thanks, Sri Hari. Uh, Rahul, if you can take this question and any comments on Adika's point, I think there's also a nice point that's been raised in the chat, which is is presence. Sorry, Satish obviously says no, whether presence is equal to productivity. But I think Rahul, in your case, uh, given that you also have to deliver to clients, uh, you know, how does this play out? Sure. So I think I think that you know at this point it's probably useful to distinguish two things, right? Uh, remote work versus working from home, right? They're very different things. Uh, and I think that, um, uh, you know, at this point, uh, we are working from home, but I think remote work specifically uh, is a very different topic, right? Remote work means that as an organization, whatever your organization does, right? I think Shipra's organization is in the business of creating a payments product. Ashok has a, a legal startup, right? Srihari and I uh, work at consulting companies. Uh, Nadika is in, uh, like she said, right? In the uh, media and, and advertising space, perhaps. Uh, remote work requires that you look at how all of the sort of, you know, if you look at a company as a black box and, you know, inputs being uh, capital people, et cetera, and the outputs being the, you know, whatever it is that comes out at the other end. Um, remote work requires, uh, a, a, you know, clear cultural protocols, I would say, almost, around how, how do you be effective, right? And every company will have different answers for that, right? And I think that, I, you know, I think that, um, you know, Ashok uh, highlights some interesting points about, you know, requiring a certain, like for instance, legislating that a certain number of people be uh, remote. Or, or you know, a certain percentage, if I if I remember correctly, um, I'm actually you know almost scared of of that. Uh, not from the perspective of needing people to be remote, but my experience with companies which have some people working in one location, don't have a remote culture, but have some people working from elsewhere. What typically happens in in you know setups that, like that that I've seen are that uh, there's huge information asymmetry. Because there's lots of conversations, uh, you know, which, you know, of course, some of them are around, um, uh, you know, are, are more socially oriented. So around, uh, you know, what you might be watching or, or, you know, whether you prefer X versus Y or whatnot. But many of those are around how do we do something or will pertain to how you uh, produce code or, or design or, or uh, you know, any of the varied things that people do in these companies. And so if you don't have a clear way that everybody in your organization, right, whether they're within an office building, which has glass walls, which has rooms, uh, or your office building is your Slack channel, or your office and, you know, or your office building is a distributed company entirely, right, where nobody has to be, say, online at the same time, necessarily, you don't have meetings, right. So there are many companies which push that uh, particular perspective very, very far. And, and I think that we've tried to borrow from those. Uh, so I think good places to look at are companies like GitLab. Uh, Basecamp is a big proponent of, of remote work, right? And uh, it's kind of interesting because if you dial back to the early, I don't know when exactly, but you know, late, 90, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, there was a clear schism that kind of happened between the idea of Agile with a capital A and Agile as a discipline with a, you know, lowercase a. And so, you know, then you went into people becoming Agile certified, right? Uh, looking, you know, fast forwarding two or three years into the future. Uh, I, I, for one, believe that, you know, this pandemic is here to stay and, you know, there will be future similar pandemics. Uh, do we see remote certified companies emerging, right? Which have as little relation to productivity in a remote space, um, as, as you know, uh, some, of, some of these predecessing things. So yes, I think that presence is, for us at least, I think, um, uh, you know, with, with discipline, with a clear understanding of what are all the kinds of artifacts that you're producing, uh, presence does not need to equal productivity. But I do empathize with companies which aren't set up to be productive without presence as well, right? 
there are I, I think that the majority of the tech sector in india at this point in time would not be productive without presence right that's the reality of the situation and one of course legislation is a is a powerful tool which can attack that it's also a very blunt instrument so i think that we have to move in with a uh, you know with a cultural approach for instance writing needs to be a discipline and be be a first class citizen in a fully remote workplace right the understanding of how to be effective asynchronously is probably an equally important uh, uh, you know discipline the other thing is that i think there are different kinds of disciplines some of which are you know it's sort of um, uh, you know to to riff off uh, you know uh, i can't remember whom i think thomas friedman or friedman um, remote work is here but it's unequally distributed right so there are protocols and ways in which programmers can be extremely effective and have historically been effective remotely uh, those protocols do not necessarily exist for all kinds of cultural production right so can designers be as effective you know maybe 50% with further investment in best practices you know closer to 80 and 100 um but for many people you know that's not part of the job training unfortunately so i think that we need to sort of evolve those practices as we move forward as well correct don't know if uh, i answered the questions at all no i, I think uh, this was useful uh, uh, and i think it was a good point about saying that you know presence is required at some level uh, but presence is not the only way to be productive uh, i think uh, some very telling remarks over here uh, can i request actually satish at this point if you can step in uh, because satish you did make this point of saying that presence is not equal to productivity i know that you work with dq and you have your own context with respect to accessibility so if you could uh, quickly comment on this and then we may have to close but we do have a bunch of things before we close uh, so satish yeah um so what i am trying to um, tell here is for example our company in us not in india obviously but in us um, has remote work because accessibility we are in accessibility space our company is a uh, dq systems incorporated which is into accessibility space digital accessibility space and most of the work in us is done remotely and um, because there is no need of a presence um, for somebody to sit and you know do the work all that you get is a product you need to just assess them audit them for accessibility or sometimes they give you a design files you only to annotate them uh, with accessibility related feedback and all that but otherwise um, this is absolutely fine for a remote uh, place um, so india we do have office but at the same time um, our company has also provided remote work or i don't know so i don't understand the difference between work from home and remote work but let's say that it is a remote work obviously they don't stay in the same city obviously Uh, there are a lot of women uh, employees who got married and they wanted to move to their husband's location so our, our company did or has provided that opportunity to go and uh, uh, to go to their place and work and we don't really ask for you know when do you log and when do you log out all that matters is are you staying for that 8 hours and be productive it doesn't matter when i ping you you are present or not if you are if you are able to come back and answer me i think that is fine that's what uh, we count um, the only place that um, as a so our company just uh, have uh, employees with disabilities and even i'm one of them so the only place a remote work or probably a work from whatever whichever it is um, has a disadvantage for people with uh, uh, so if you have a lot of meetings particularly people uh, who are visually impaired or blind what they will face is if there are so much of you know sharing the screens and you know explaining the concepts or maybe some organizational charts or uh, maybe sometimes um the presentations and all that going on they may find it difficult because obviously there would be no one to help them whereas in an office space there would be somebody to help them but if you on the other hand this is just a one small glitch that we have at remote work but if you, on the other hand they will be more productive because they are comfortable at where they are although they want to venture out that's a different story but still at home uh, they can be comfortable because they know the place they can roam around they can go to their systems and work any time and they can be productive so they don't need to travel they don't ask, they don't need to ask for help in the uh, at, at the public place or you know maybe the commutation and all that so 
there are a lot of things that could be saved for people with disabilities and our company adopts that also and as of now so for the past one month i have been doing uh, work from home and i'm i'm able to meet the same goal um, as i was able to at office too thank you thanks atish uh, okay so time is not unfortunately on our side uh, we uh, we are actually at the close but there are a lot of very good questions including one that even i'm very interested in i knowing which is somebody mentioning that she's the only woman on her team and uh, there is everyone chasing a deadline and uh, she seems to be the one at disadvantage in what role can hr play unfortunately we don't have the time to answer that question and a bunch of other questions that have come regarding mental health but what we can promise you is that we will rope in the people here on this chat uh, and hopefully uh, rahul and chipra nashok will also join us and we will do a session which might be an ama where we can look at these questions and some of the follow up questions that have also come in please stay tuned we will keep you updated in terms of how we're going to run this but we will try to take this up as soon as possible uh, since the conversation is quite lively and people have a lot of questions i don't have anything else much to say over here but thank you so much ashok rahul shipra and many of you others unfortunately we could not include all of you given that we had shortage of time but let's keep continuing this conversation and uh, let's see if we can uh, can actually kind of come up with a framework and uh, you know like obvious mentioned like rahul mentioned obvious as a playbook i think this might be a useful time for organizations to create some of these blueprints for themselves either in terms of playbooks or uh, or little things that actually help in 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 gratiating a culture itself having said that thank you very much uh, we have a, a slack channel you can join which is friends.hasgeek.com uh, and uh, we, let's hope to continue the conversations over there and you will hear from us in terms of uh, follow up and this uh, and our questions to be taken up thank you everyone for being here today thank you yes. bye thank you bye bye